So let's look at how you would build a graph using uh, that ADT. So you create a new graph object and then this is for a undirected graph so we add an edge uh, this this who knows who so Bob knows Mary and Mary knows Sam and those are uh, not directional so we need to add an edge in both directions so Bob knows Mary and Mary knows Bob so we have to add both edges uh, for each of these uh, edges here and notice when we add edge will add the vertex for us if it doesn't already exist so if you have a digraph or a directed graph and you want to do an add vertex uh, so let's cover that. So here's the digraph. So in a, a digraph, the edges go in a particular direction. And in that case, you add edge with the from and the to. So Bob likes Mary in this case. Uh, Mary likes Sam. And Joe has no relationship or connections. So you can't add an edge to add the vertex Joe. You have to call add edge by itself. And uh, the reason you might add vertex uh, use add vertexes in this case where you have a, a, a vertex that has no connections or you have a dynamic graph and you want to add vertexes later uh, over time. So let's look at actually the implementation uh, ways of implementing this ADT. Uh, there's actually a two we're covering in the book. There's adjacency matrix which we're actually not going to do code for. We're just going to show you a diagram for this. Uh, it's the easiest way to implement a graph is using a two-dimensional array or a matrix uh, where each um, vertex ID you map to an index number um, and then that index number in turn looks up a row or a column. The rows are the from vertex and the columns are the to vertex. You'll see a diagram in the next slide which will make this clear. If there's a connection then there's a weight or a cost stored in the cell at the intersection. If there's uh, if it's not a weighted graph, then you just store like ones in all the uh, edges in the in the uh, matrix. Uh, the adjacency matrix is very nice for small graphs, but most graph implementations that are interesting uh, are they're just too big for adjacency matrix, and we'll look at why that is in a second. So instead, uh, most implementations you'll see online are called adjacency list implementations in different languages. And we'll cover that after we talk about this one. Uh, note with an adjacency matrix, if you have an undirected graph, you have to enter two entries in the matrix for every to represent edges going in both directions. So we're going to show you two examples. This is a directed graph with weights. So here's a picture of the graph and the way it works is you look up the from vertex and then you follow that across and you'll see a weight and that means there's an edge associated with the two vertex V2. So you can say V1 has a, a, a direction going to V2 that's a weight 4. So let's find V1 and V2. So here it is right here. There's the edge that has a weight of 4. Uh, so if you look at all these edges, you'll see those are the represented by the numbers inside the matrix. And then the vertices have to uh, be all here and all here. Uh, notice that most of the cells in this graph are empty. We call this sparse. So this is a data structure that has a lot of room in it that's not being used. That's when we call it sparse. You can actually measure sparseness by counting how many cells are used divided by the total cells, and this is 25% used. A graph with a thousand vertices would require uh, one million cells because you have to just take the square of the vertice. So the memory requirements of a matrix are the number of vertices squared. So for a large vertice, uh, large number of vertices, that can be very expensive and easily consume all your memory. Plus, if it's sparse, it's going to waste most of that memory. So here's the JCC matrix for an undirected graph. So you'll see for an undirected graph, you have to have uh, two ones for every edge. So there's an edge from uh, 1 to 0. We have to store it here, but we also have to store it from here to here. So this line here, you'll see, is a reflection. Everything's reflected on the bottom of this line and on the other side which represents uh, that's happening. So everywhere you have a 1 here, there's a reflection of a 1 here, uh, just to point that out. So here's the undirected graph I have. And here's a vertex that doesn't have any edges, so it's listed here, but you'll notice in its column and its row, there's no entries of 1. 
And these have no weights, so this also shows when you have no weights, you can just put one representing there's an actual edge. So here's how we're going to implement a, uh, this is called an adjacency list. So this is the other way of implementing. We show the same graph here. So the adjacency list, the idea is you have a dictionary of the vertices that you can look up. And when you uh, find the vertice you want, it points to an object, which is going to be a vertex object, which will have a, 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 at least an ID, which stores the key, and a list, which will store the list of vertices. And the list of vertices here has the vert uh, a vertex object um, and then a weight as the value. So it's a, a list of key value or dictionary. So you can see this graph is represented here. Let's look up the one we did before. Here's V1 has a directed edge of weight 4 to V2. So if we look up V1 here, it has an adjacency list which says, oh, there's a, there's a, uh, it's going from V1 to V2 with a weight of 4. So that's how you do that. Now, when we get into the implementation of the book, uh, they're going to add more attributes to a vertex uh, to help with some of the, uh, the algorithms. And you can see right away, one thing you might want to add is the data for a vertex here. Uh, Jason's lists are much more memory efficient than spar the sparse graphs. Because if you have a, a matrix that's sparse, this is much more efficient. Uh, just to point that out. Now here's implementing uh, uh, the same thing but for an undirected graph. So for an undirected graph, uh, for, for like for between V0 and V3, you have to have both directions. So when we go to V0, you'll see it V0 goes to V3, and if we go to V3, you can see V3 goes to V0. So you have to have entries in both sides of the edge uh, in the adjacency matrices. So I'm just pointing that out here. Now since this ha is a undirected graph and it doesn't have any weights, we just store zero for all the weights. Please subscribe to my channel. You'll see an icon in the lower right to do that and you'll receive notifications when I post new videos. Thank you.